Hey cool campers, I'm Gabby and welcome to my channel. The other day someone wrote to me on Instagram, hey, can you make a video on being okay after not having camp? It's been hitting me really hard. First of all, I want to thank this person for being vulnerable and sharing this information with me and giving me permission to share it with the rest of the world. Sometimes as hard as it is to deal with something on your own, it's even harder to ask for help. I'm sure this person is not the only one going through this right now. I actually know for a fact that they're not alone because I'm feeling it too. Whether it was your summer camp that was canceled or something else you were really looking forward to this year, it can be really hard to deal with. Just like this person, the biggest thing that I had canceled this year was my summer camp. This would have been my 8th summer working at the camp and 12th summer overall, and I was supposed to be the Mountain View Supervisor, which if you don't know, it's the youngest kids at my camp, and I was really excited. But of course, the pandemic had other plans, and I'm still home. The day I'm filming this is August 12th, and camp would actually almost be over at this point, so it's crazy to think that we never even got to go. On top of everything else that's going on in the world, and trust me, I know there are much more serious things going on, camp being canceled just adds another layer of disappointment. If you're watching this and you're having a hard time about not being at camp this summer, just know you're not alone and we're all in this together. With all of that said, today I'd like to talk to you about how I've been dealing with all my feelings about not being at camp this summer. Of course, everyone's different, so I'm just sharing my own personal experiences and telling you what I do to keep myself calm. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'll be totally honest, my natural instinct when I start to get overwhelmed or feel super emotional is to just push them down and ignore them and distract myself. But let me tell you, whenever I do that, it always ends up bubbling up and it comes out eventually. This brings me to the first thing I've been doing, and it actually might be the most important out of all of the things that I do. I have to constantly remind myself to be okay with not being okay. I'm definitely an overthinker, so when I start to spiral and think about all the things, for example, that could have happened at camp this summer, the things I'm missing out on, or the people I really miss back home, I get really upset. Sometimes I get so overwhelmed that I just want to curl up in a ball and not leave my bed. And that's okay. It's okay to be sad, or angry, or frustrated, or disappointed, or whatever else you are feeling. Feel those feelings. It's so important to acknowledge and accept the way that you are feeling because until you do those things, you can't get better. Think about the last time you fell and scraped your knee. You fell, you felt the pain, but then you cleaned it and you put a band-aid on it and after a little while it healed itself. But what if you had scraped your knee and you just left it dirty? You didn't put a band-aid on it, you didn't clean it off, and then just pretended it was fine and didn't do anything about it. Maybe you would have gotten an infection which would have prolonged the healing process and caused you even more pain. Ignoring the pain you're feeling does not make it go away, it just makes it last longer even if you don't know it. So I guess in a way mental health is like a scraped knee. If you ignore how you're feeling, you prolong the healing process. It's important to acknowledge those feelings and take action to take care of yourself. Now, I'm 25 years old and I've struggled with this my whole life and I still struggle with it, so it's way easier said than done, believe me. But it's important to at least try. Something that really helps me understand what I'm feeling is actually doing what I'm doing right now, talking about it. Whether I'm sharing my feelings with a friend or family member or even just talking to a camera, saying it out loud is actually super helpful. For example, right now I'm feeling a little nervous because I have an interview later today. I'm also kind of hungry. Something else that really helps me when I'm in my feels is to write things down. Just like talking out loud to someone else, writing things down and getting all that stuff out of my brain allows me to figure out what exactly I'm feeling. And then once I know what I'm feeling, I can deal with it. Relating this back to being okay with not being at summer camp, I like to write down all of my stories and then share them all with you because I like to remember the great times I've had instead of just dwelling on the fact that I'm not there right now. It keeps the memories alive beyond just being in my brain. Okay, so you've talked it out, you've written things down, or done whatever else you need to do to acknowledge the feelings. Now what? At least for me, it depends on what I'm feeling that day. One of the main things I found helpful during quarantine is FaceTiming my friends. Sometimes we talk about our feelings, but a lot of the time it's just to catch up. I find this a great way to keep myself happy and to motivate me to get things done during the day. Specifically when it comes to not being at camp this summer, which was the original question but I keep going off on tangents, welcome to my life, I have been making an active effort to still be a part of the camp community even though I can't physically be there this summer. My camp, like a lot of other camps I've heard of, has been doing virtual activities. I can't even count the amount of Zoom calls I've been on in the last few months. It's been so fun getting to participate in whatever my camp has been offering and getting to lead some of those activities too. I always log off feeling so much better. Even if I'm having the worst day, I know that once I do a camp activity, I'm going to feel better. It's also been really cool to get to run the activities because then I get to connect with campers and make their days a little bit better. I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and let you know some things I do when there are an activity going on or when my friends can't answer the phone. Or sometimes you're just not in the mood to talk to other people. And that's okay too. When I'm feeling this way, one of my favorite things to do is go on YouTube and just watch videos. I also love making TikToks and making videos, but I sometimes just want to sit around and do nothing, and that requires a lot less effort. 
My favorite YouTuber ever, Call Me Ballinger, has been vlogging every day since the pandemic started, and honestly, I don't know what I would do without her. I don't know what it is, but I always feel better after I watch her videos. Also, when I'm feeling a bit down, I like to go back through the comments on my TikTok that all of you leave because, I don't know, it just makes me feel nice, you know? Seeing all your positivity and saying that I'm an inspiration, like, no, you are inspiring me. You are the reason I'm doing this, so thank you. Something else I really like to do when I'm not in a good mood is just blast music, sing along, and dance like no one's watching. I guess technically somebody might be watching because the blinds are open sometimes, but whatever. <laughs> Making a total fool of myself alone in my room is so cathartic and always makes me feel better. My current solo dance party playlist includes Freaking Out by Arizona, You Need to Calm Down by Taylor Swift, and pretty much any song off the Beetlejuice album, the musical version. This is definitely my favorite coping mechanism because it's so much fun. If you've never blasted your favorite song and danced around your room, I highly recommend it. So a lot of the emotions and feelings that I've been experiencing lately have been because I haven't been able to be at camp, along with a lot of other reasons, of course. And those are just a few examples of things that I've been doing to help myself feel better or calm down when I'm super overwhelmed. Again, this is what works for me personally, and I kind of want to know what you all do, so leave a comment down below. Who knows? You might end up helping someone. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you're able to take away something positive from this. Also, if you know of any other good songs to listen to when you're just dancing around your room, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and push that bell notification button for more videos from me. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram if it hasn't been banned yet. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you're still watching, first of all, so cool that you made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much. I wanted you to be the first to know that the next video I post is going to be a what should you bring to camp. Some essential things that might not be on your list. I know summer camp is a whole year away at this point, but it's never too early to prepare. Okay, bye.